Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to a video about the secret hidden bedrooms on many long haul aeroplanes. The question, where do pilots and flight attendants go for a nap during long haul flights? So don't fall asleep and let's get started. Hello, ground number 2303, Lima Alpha, we have uniform. Number 2303, ground, one three right shortened. Taxi right alpha, short of November. This video is brought to you by airplanesticker.com. Check out their website and find your favorite airplane model or airline as a suitcase sticker and order today. Watch until the end of the video for a great giveaway. Remember the last time you were on a long distance flight, you got acquainted with your seat and the flight attendant came around after takeoff serving you food and drinks. Now you must know that with most airlines, flight attendants remain at their position or service station for the entire flight. But after a couple of hours, another flight attendant suddenly starts serving you food and drinks and you start questioning, where did the pretty flight attendant go serving me earlier? Now I'm not sure if you have seen these mysterious doors on long haul jets. They very often come with an electric lock and no real description what's behind them. Well, these doors lead to the crew rest compartments for the flight attendants. So if you ever wonder where the flight attendant has gone, she's probably on her controlled rest in the crew compartment. Now, where are these crew compartments located? Now, this very much depends on the size of the airplane and airline. Some crew compartments are below the cabin floors or above the passenger seats on more modern jets, such as the Boeing Dreamliner. So if we look at this picture of the Boeing 787, at the far end of the cabin, you can see the crew rest for the flight attendants, which gives space for two flight attendants or more, depending on the airline order. So the flight attendants use the very narrow staircase hidden behind the mysterious doors I've mentioned earlier to climb into that compartment. At the front of the fuselage, just above the first class, you have another crew rest area for the pilots. How are these areas equipped? Well, don't expect a five-star hotel room. They are comparable to Japanese sleeping pods or the one you see in the Fifth Element movie. So they are pretty small but comfortable. They come with a decent bed, a few cushions and a proper duvet. Curtains to get some privacy from other colleagues, a light for each compartment, which can be dimmed as shown by my dear colleague pilot Alexander, and you can also set your desired temperature. Very rarely, some of them come with the same entertainment system, like a TV, for instance, as the passengers have. Others come with emergency equipment, such as an oxygen mask in case of cabin depressurization, a PBE in case of smoke in the cabin, and a fire extinguisher. And as a safety measure, the beds come with a belt to be closed around your waist to prevent you from getting hurt in severe turbulence. Last but not least, you have an interphone with which other crew members can call you in case of an emergency, but luckily they are primarily used to wake you up from your controlled rest. When can you get some rest time? Now this depends entirely on the crew composition. On flights longer than nine hours, flight crews literally work in shifts. Now, I can't really speak for the flight attendants on how they divide up their rest time, but from a pilot's perspective, that's how we do it. Now, let's say we were to be flying from Frankfurt, Germany to Los Angeles, California. Now, that's a 12-hour flight. Now, with most airlines, that requires at least three, sometimes even four pilots for that trip. Now let's say three pilots for our example. So during the briefing, we decide on who will be the pilot flying and who will be the pilot monitoring. Now the pilot flying will be the pilot performing takeoff and landing. So he or she has to be up in the cockpit for those two phases of flight. Now very often the pilot monitoring sitting next to the pilot flying during takeoff will also be the one for landing. You then first have to calculate the actual time window in which rest is allowed. So for our example, all pilots need to be within the cockpit for takeoff until passing 10,000 feet as it is prohibited to be in the bunk for takeoff. And the same goes for landing. All crew members should be in the cockpit for the descent preparations and checklists, which start roughly one hour before landing. So. From 12 hours, we are down to 10 hours and 50 minutes. 
but we also have to take into account the time of actually waking up, putting on the uniform back on, swapping seats with the colleague and doing a proper handover and briefing updates. That's a minimum of 10 minutes each, so another 30 minutes subtracted gives us 10 hours and 20 minutes of actual rest time divided by three pilots, approximately three hours and 27 minutes of rest. Does that make sense? <laughs> Speaking of pilot flying, during the time the captain is in the crew bunk having his rest, very often the more experienced first officer will be the pilot flying in the left-hand seat for the time unless otherwise discussed at the briefing. The colleagues flying at the time will set a timer when to wake up the resting pilots and use the interphone system to do so. It's a similar chime as if you press the flight attendance button, it will light up in the crew compartment and you have to acknowledge the wake up call by pressing the lit up button, notifying the flying crew you are getting up. Do you get enough rest in the bunk? Now that question is difficult to answer as it really depends on the time of day, the day of your rotation, jet lag effects and if it's a smooth or bumpy flight. I admit one of my colleagues had to go back to the bunk once and wake me up because I was so fast asleep and I didn't hear the wake up chime. Trust me, once in a while sleep deprivation will haunt you down and knock you out when you least expect it. So the next time you wonder where the lovely flight attendant has gone to, she might be getting some rest time above your head in the secret bedroom of the airplane. And as mentioned at the beginning of the video, I have another amazing giveaway for you guys you can sign up for. As this video is brought to you by my colleagues and friends from airplanestickers.com, they came up with a really cool idea. Airplanestickers.com was founded by a pilot friend of mine who wanted to represent the company he was flying for on his flight kit with a sticker. Now, since there was no market for it, he created the first designs by himself. The interest and feedback of the colleagues was overwhelming and the idea was born to spread this product across the globe. So he called me up one day and said, Joe, check your emails. I've just sent you your own personalized airplane sticker. I totally fell in love with it and I said, mate, send me over a hundred of those and we'll make a cool giveaway for my followers. And here we are right now. So if you want this really cool 747-8 Captain Joe sticker plus two Captain Joe bumper stickers, go down in the link in the description box below, click on airplane sticker giveaway that will bring you to my website, fill out the contact form, and if you are one among the 100 lucky ones, you'll receive an email with instructions so we can send it via mail to you. And you have to sign up for my newsletter. I have one word for you, legend, wait for it, wait for eternity and even longer, <laughs> dare me. That's it for today. Thank you very much for your time. Hit that subscribe button and activate the notification bell so you won't miss out on upcoming videos. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. See you next week. Wishing you all the best. Your Captain Joe. <laughs>